Hi there and welcome back to my channel. This is Sean, the Honest Book Reviewer, with another book review. In this video we're discussing The Drowning House, written by Cherie Priest. It's a horror. It reminded me of 80s horror, you know, books by John Saul and maybe even James Herbert. A type of horror where atmosphere and character are more important than blood and gore and those cheap shock thrills. That reminded me of that. And I like this. I found it compelling. Much of that is because of the way the characters are written, their reactions, and the atmosphere of the setting. The setting in this book is quite brilliant. It's set on a small island, and with, you know, an island that has great storms, you know, powerful storms, lots of rain, that sort of thing. That type of setting in a paranormal or horror novel, I think, is quite powerful. The book is split into two narratives, past and present. Now, in the past narrative, we have three friends. Simon, Melissa and Leo. Leo is the youngest and Simon and Melissa are around about the same age. And that past narrative is from when they're, you know, around early teenagers and Leo's a bit younger to when they're getting towards college age. That's in the past narrative. And we have just little chapters based on certain moments in their lives during their childhood and adolescence. I enjoyed the past narratives a lot because with all the characters in whatever age they were, they feel genuine. Not all authors can do that. It's a strength, I think, for an author to be able to make you believe that characters are the age that author tells you they are. And it just makes for more compelling chapters. Because if you believe the characters are who they're meant to be, you can really just immerse yourself into the rest of the story. And I enjoyed everything about those past narrative chapters. They're full of adventure and fun as these characters go about doing things to fill in their summer holiday time. And I just like how they all come together as well. The reason those characters become friends is because they're all on this small island in the summer and they have nobody else, no other kids around. And they're kind of forced together because of that. But they become fast friends and great friends. And I like the way that all plays out in the book. In the past narrative as well, we get to learn more about Simon's grandmother because Simon lives with his grandmother on this small island. He's there all the time. And with his grandmother, we get to learn that she's quite mysterious and there's something about the ocean, some link to the ocean she has. We don't know what that is. We get a feeling it's very important and very powerful and there's something about the ocean she doesn't trust. She tries to instill that into the children at certain times. And at certain times in his past narrative, something happens with the ocean and the children. I won't tell you what. It is very important. It does make you wonder what will take place in the present narrative and how that's linked. In the present day narrative, which I think is almost 20 or 30 years after the past narrative, Simon still lives with his grandmother in the house on the island. There's a great storm. Simon's grandmother runs out of the house in the early hours of the morning and she has a great shock and she dies basically and we think she dies from fright. Simon finds his grandmother and calls the police but then Simon vanishes. No one knows where he is. Before Simon vanishes he does manage to shoot off a quick phone message or an email to Melissa and Leo but then he's gone and Melissa and Leo don't know where he is. They both travel to the island to try to find Simon to find out where he is. They can't find him. And so there's a mystery. Where is he? But then there's a second mystery because they discover there's a house on the beach that's been washed up in the storm. And it looks like the house has been there for decades, in the water for decades. And they're wondering how it got there because the house is mainly intact. So that's quite mysterious. And that house plays a regular motif in this book. So those two mysteries, you know, what is this house about? And also where's Simon? They're very prominent in this book. They're quite spooky. They feel paranormal in nature. And they drive Melissa and Leo to try to find out more about the Highland, about the history of Simon's grandmother's house, about the history of the area in general. And I like that part of it. It was almost like going back to kind of mysteries I read when I was a child, that component of it. And the paranormal aspect with that feeling of like 80s horror books, those two things together just made me really feel this book was just well-balanced, well-written, and those two elements combining just gave me a great sense of almost joy in the story. Because even though this is a horror, even though there's darkness and there's quite grim things going on in this book, those two elements reminded me of things I enjoyed in books that I've read in the past. 
And I like when that happens because those what you read in the past, I think, what you enjoy in the past, I think, does influence what you enjoy later on in books as well. What stood out for me, apart from the atmosphere on the island, is the characters Melissa and Leo, their construct. It was very well done in the story. What makes them them in the book, if you want to put it that way. The author injects certain coping mechanisms into both characters. The different mechanisms used in different ways at different times, but they feel real and they actually feel like coping mechanisms that suit who those characters are. Because in this book, Melissa is more loud, more vibrant, even brash. And Leo is a bit more studious, a bit more careful in what he does and he says. And their coping mechanisms match that. So in a way, the way this author has constructed their whole psychology in this book really feels real to me. It feels like they're real people in the story. And you can't get away from the chilling atmosphere in this book. I mean, it does feel real. We have that house that's being washed up from the ocean. That's chilling as well because in the house you get a sense of shadows, maybe somebody watching that sort of thing. We have the storms on the island, especially at night with storms raging and the darkness on the island that just adds so much atmosphere in this book. So you can't get away from the atmosphere in the story. It's there all the time. And the history of the island and then the house and with Simon's grandmother, when you find out more, the atmosphere is quite chilling from that. Melissa is a great character in this story. I mean, she's loud, she's vibrant, sometimes brash. She says things and does things sometimes without thinking. And that's consistent in the past and present narrative. So the author's done a great job of making the character feel real and making all those elements meet up in those two narratives. I like her as a character. I like the way she's written. Even when she says things that seem uncaring to Leo in the story, because it matches who she is. It makes her slightly unlikable in those moments, but she's engaging because she is just a very loud character in the story. She's important because she has great links to Simon who's vanished, but she also has great links to Leo who's still there. Leo is a character in this book I have a soft spot for. He seems the most trusting, the most caring. The character who always believes what people are showing. He doesn't really think that characters can be duplicitous. doesn't think characters can be deceiving. And I like that in this character, Leo. I like the way he plays out. I like the way he acts in the book, the way the author writes him in the story. I think it's very genuine and real. He just feels like this caring and just quiet person who's been thrust into a situation. He, he's not sure about how to react to it or even how to investigate it fully, but he's willing to give it a go because he wants to try to find his best friend. So for me, he was a great character in this book. Simon is the character we basically see in the past narrative. We see a small snippet in the present narrative, beginning of the story, but most of what we know is from his childhood and early adult years. What we do learn is he's caring and generous sometimes, but sometimes he comes across as entitled because he comes from a family who doesn't want for anything. He's grandfather and his father invented certain things and made a lot of money. So he comes from a background of wealth and that comes across in his attitude at certain times in the past narrative, not all the time. He's not that sort of character where money kind of rounds out who he is as a person, but you kind of get the impression that he thinks of himself sometimes as a leader because he has that wealth to fall back on, if that makes sense. So for me, He's still a good character in that past narrative and he still feels very genuine and I like his interactions with Melissa and Leo in the past narrative. But you always think there's more complexity to Simon than the other characters. That's how I think about this character anyway. I enjoyed this story so much overall. I mean, it reminded me of those 80s horrors with character and atmosphere being more important than anything else. And it's true to form in this book. The characters are well written, the atmosphere is really rich, and there are certain moments in this book where you can just touch the atmosphere, it feels visceral, feels real. I enjoyed the book, I want to read more by this author. On my channel I review many horror books. If you enjoy horror, check out my channel and subscribe. On the screen now is a link to another video for a book I'm sure you'll enjoy.